Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, it's Mike with Trade Winds RV Center here to congratulate you on your Jayco North Point 382 FLRB fifth wheel. You guys have picked a beautiful trailer here. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration when parking your RV. On your campsite, you've got a couple slides you got to think about. Leave plenty of room for them to come in and out, unhindered. But you also got awnings that come out beyond that. Leave plenty of room for all of them to come in and out, unimpeded. Preferably nothing hanging over your slides. And your off camp side, you got three slides to think about. So leave plenty of room for them. Your eye that the back one is out, gonna be the furthest one out. See how much room you're gonna need. Make sure you leave plenty of room. But I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are gonna be. Your power is going to plug in all the way on the rear corner of your driver's side of your tow vehicle or your off camp side of your RV. So all the way back here in the corner is your power, your water, and the other hand is going to be way toward the front. So get yourself a nice long water hose, park accordingly, utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive, first thing we do is unhook our hitch. Now your auto leveling system is right up here. I'll go over the hitch setup when you get here. But to turn on your auto leveling or hitch removal, hold your up and down buttons at the same time. Now you're simply gonna raise the front to get your unit up off the, your trailer up off the unit. Again, show you just raising that front. Once your trailer, is up off your vehicle and your vehicle is up out of the way simply hit auto level auto level is going to run all those auto leveling jacks down front and behind the tires we've already got them down see them coming up when we close the unit up we've got them already down once that's done this light will start will go from flashing green and it'll stop and be green you see the unit won't move anymore. The landing legs may lift a little bit or lower to get the unit level. Once that's done, we got our unit level and stable. Let's hook up our power and water. Again, back in this corner, big long 50 amp cord. The way these new ones plug in now is it will come into the left. Once it's in, twist to the right to lock it in and then go ahead and use this black washer keep it on there now at the end of this 50 amp service should you need to plug in at a 30 amp campsite in your convenience pack will be a dog bone bringing you from 50 down to 30 and if you ever need to plug into a 110 a 30 to 15 amp to plug into a 110 with get your power hooked up let's hook up your water your docking station is toward the front of the unit yeah, docking light in here. We'll remove this spray port hose. Show you that first. How that hooks up. Just a quick connect here. Push on that. Remove that out of our way. So you just push in this and that'll pull it out. All right, for our water. Made it real simple. We give us a nice diagram of four handles to turn. First and foremost, before we start, our water pressure regulator. 
This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Always use this when putting fluid in your unit because you don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites. Hook that up to city water connection. Hook up your hose. Now we're going to turn this to city water. White down, green to the right, red up, blue to the left. Set up for city water. Hooked up here, but don't turn your hose on yet. One last step. Make sure our hot water heater is, our drain is in. Now this will pull right up off here. There's your drain. Get your plug back in there. It's a plug and rod as well. Uh, get your plumber's tape around that. Putty will gum up on you, so preferably use tape. Get that in there nice and snug. That's an inch and an eighth. Once that's in there tight, you can go ahead and turn that hose on. Now after that hose has been on for a little bit, you can go inside and deploy all your slides if you want. Remember, our unit's already level and stable. I need you to do that so you can get inside and open up all of your water taps. Open them all up, get all the air out of the lines, get a nice steady flow of water going through them all, shut them off. Then you'll know your hot water heater's full and you can turn that on from indoors. Now there is an electric element down here. Know where to turn that on at. And there's a reset button. If for some reason your hot water heater doesn't seem to be working, come out here and check to see if these are bubbled up. If they are, simply press them back in. There, a reset button. And then this is your pressure release valve. All right, let's say we're going to go camping and we're not going to use city water. We're going to go boondocking or dry camping. In that case, it's going to be a two-step process. We're going to start by filling the tank. Turn your handles as noted. White down, green to the left, red up. And we'll turn our blue down. Same spot. Turn our hose on. Treat the hot water heater the same way. Make sure it's full or make sure that it's plugged up. Except this time you're gonna go inside while this is filling and watch the level of the fresh water tank fill. On the inside you have a black and gray tank spot to watch to see when those tanks are full. You also have a fresh water button. Once that's full, remove that hose. Then you'll switch from power tank fill to dry camping. You'll simply turn your blue back, turn your green up, and then whenever you want to utilize that water you just put in there, you'll turn on your water pump. You can turn it on out here or inside as well. All right, we're all set up to camp. We've got our power and our water hooked up. Let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the outside of the unit, continuing here in the docking station. Again, up here, your auto leveling system. Instructions on all of that. To the right here, you're prepped for solar. You can plug in a solar panel right here, and that'll trickle charge your batteries. There's where you turn on your water pump. Over there is your light indicator showing it's on. Down there is your other instructions for sanitizing and winterizing. Make sure you turn those the proper ways and bypass your hot water heater. Over here is your satellite cable and auxiliary hookups. City water and fresh water fill. Over here is your black tank flush. We'll talk about that when we dump our black tanks. Uh, and that is your water filter. And an access panel to run them hoses down through. Continuing to my right is above your hot water heater is a flue for your furnace. Two things on that. One, make sure it's never blocked. And two, if you are running your furnace, steer clear of it. It does get hot. When you pass your storage here, these lights can be set to um, motion or just on. Inside there is a water tank that you can fill with fresh water or pick up those tanks anywhere and fill it, them jugs. Run that hose down through that. That hose runs to a water pump on your island on the inside that you can constantly have your own fresh water so you don't have to drink any camp water. Right here will be your propane. Is on a regulator. Lefty Lucy to open. Point this toward the tank you wish to be using. Green means you have gas. It'll turn red when it goes down. Continue down off our off camp side. There's a low point drain that you'll be easier to see when that uh, slide is closed. Access to the back of your fridge and ice valve lines. Your second black tank flush. And this will be for your rear black tank. 
Both of these are just storage. There's your black and gray tank for your gray tank for your sink and uh, island. Your black tank for your front bathroom. Your gray tank for your outdoor kitchen. Black tank and gray tank for your back bathroom. Coming around the rear again is your power. You have a ladder, utilize it. Go up there a couple times a year and check the seams of your roof. Caulk as needed with recommended RV roofing caulk. They're also prepped for if you're on backup camera. Device you can purchase from our store that sits on the dash of your tow vehicle. Put another piece on here. They electronically communicate, giving you a backup camera for the unit. Accessory hitching. All your info for that is right there. Weight limits, whatnot. Come around to the outside. Over here, you got a couple of outdoor speakers. Manual spare tire crank. Put your spare tire right there. I'm gonna open up these storages. It usually takes two hands at the same time. Our uh, piece on the left is gonna give you an outdoor fridge, sink. Grab this baby and pull it on out here. A big three burner griddle, prep area, storage, extra little cutting area, really great outdoor kitchen. Putting that all right back in. You have to have two hands to push these buttons, so I'll come back to that. On the back of this, when you have this out, I'll show you real quick here. This is where you turn, turn in your LP. On off up back here. Uh, your storage. There is your manual spare tire crank. Again, your outdoor fridge or um, speakers. Our steps out here are adjustable. Simply press that in, and that will bring this leg up or down, however you need it. Coming up front, another low point drain. It will be easier accessible with our slides closed. Again, one in here. That spray port hose that I took off the outdoor kitchen when we first started. We'll also hook up over here. It's a temperature reader for the unit. You can also hook up a TV out here, 110 and cable. Your vacuum system will hook up over here. Hook your vacuum into here. Back behind here will be your access panel to your water lines. You want to dump your local drains right here. Spare propane. Coming up front is your batteries. and your fluids for your leveling system. Check your battery post every now and then, make sure those haven't wiggled loose over time. That about covers everything out here. Let's go take a look on the inside. Rusty. Oh. All right, coming up inside the unit. First thing I always like to point out is the fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camp with you knows the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway. To my left, as I come in, is going to be our control panel. Simply just come in and touch the screen. Touch the home in the left corner. And I'll walk through this. This is your climate control, your lights, your motors, which is your slides and uh, awnings. Your tanks, which is checking the levels of your, or turning on uh, water tanks. For black and gray tanks and fresh tanks. And energy shows you what you're running off. So you can do these all from here, or you can do the same thing down through here. There's climate, or there's tanks, excuse me. There's motors, which is your leveling system, your slides and awnings, et cetera, et cetera. So we will go, we will go through all of them. Going back to home here, I'm gonna start in the water. So right now they're testing your water, so your fresh water is full. This will show your black and gray tank levels. Up here is where you can turn on your tank heater. That's if you're in inclement weather, you'll turn that on. Um, make sure your tanks have water in them. And what that does is uh, it turns on a 12 volt pad that's on your tanks to keep them from freezing. 
It's the only time you ever want to turn that on if you think you're in inclement weather and they're going to freeze. Turn on your water heater for gas here, your water heater for electric here, and then your water pump if you're using potable water over here. Next, leveling. You can do your auto leveling from here. You can also run your slides and awnings. Speaking of awnings, let's run them out. So we got them just about all the way out right here. What I want to show you is you only want to run these out until your flat falls down to 90 degrees and you can see that brown bar. If you were to hold that down, that will continue to run itself out, run itself out past that point and start running itself up backwards. So keep an eye on it when you're running them out. Make sure you don't run them out past the point that you need to. Your awnings also have a pitch control. This one's out of the way. I'll show you how that works. If it is raining down at the other end and you want the rain to fall down this way, we will simply grab our awning handle here, pull that down, and that's going to pitch away all your rainwater. Just lift that up close to level, and that will straighten itself out when bringing it back in. Start to bring that one back in. And then I'll show you this one doing the same thing and retract and you'll see that it will straighten itself out as it brings itself in and as your awning comes in we will close the door and continue our tour Slam locks work best when gently slammed. All right, continue back up here. We'll do the slides when we close the unit up. Next will be our temperatures. Let's say we're going to come in here and turn the AC on in the living room. Hear that crank up. Shut the AC off. Shuts off quickly. Now if I do this on heat, heat kicks on. Now I shut the heat off takes a minute for the heat to cycle through before uh, the fan actually shuts off. Over here's the different modes. I'll turn it on, show you the modes. Cool, auto, fan, and heat. Fan, you can actually do different levels of as well. Shut that heat off, it's warm enough in here. Second AC in your bedroom. Crank that up. Shut that off. Lights. Coolest thing about these lights, I'll show you in the bedroom. They are dimmable. Slide this, slide this line down and back up and back down. Every light in this unit, except the rear accent, is in front exit, are dimmable. Shut them off by just touching here. Turn them back on. Next, just shows our tire pressure, and then what kind of power we're running off. Down at the bottom, another place, lights. All interior is number one. All exterior is number two. Three will do both. Here's another spot to turn on your water pump. Now we've got these arrows and extend and retract. So you got to guess what's in here, awnings and slides. However, you can get the BM Pro app. J command BM Pro app on your phone. Go to pair. Pair this to your phone. Stand outside and open up your slides and awnings. Turn on your lights, etc. All this from it. Awning one, awning two. You just extend or retract there. Slides one, two, three, and four. We'll utilize them and five. And then off. We we'll utilize them when closing the unit up. All right, continuing in. To our left here, we got a little max air vent. Hit on, that opens it and turns it on. Hit off, closes it and shuts it off. Got a nice sliding door here that you don't want to mess up. So during travel, make sure that you snap this back. In this bathroom, we have a ceiling fan. An event you can open, and a fan you can turn on. Make sure you close that fan during travel. 
110 there. We need your kitchen. Whole separate manual on your Whirlpool fridge. That'll be in your paperwork. Another self-explanatory microwave. Down below that's your cooktop. Uh, panel light on this end. Turn that to high. Hit it. Not just that quick. Turn it. Hope that's your oven in the middle. I'm gonna do that. Turn these. Press them. Show all these cooking for you. And your back one back here. So it's just a press. Turn and press. Same thing on your oven. Put it to light. Press it. Light it. No, uh, no pilot light anymore. It'll light from here. And then just turn it to the desired temperature. You also have an oven light. From here you can control some lights as well. Or turn your AC on high or low while you're standing here cooking. You know about the two-sided TV. Let's go ahead and raise it. I'll show you next to that is a 110 with GFCI reset. Some more lighting. Here's your inverter remote control. TV number one up. Start that one up. So wherever, when you arrive at the campsites, you're going to want to run a digital channel scan and to pick up all the local channels just go to menu to your channel search over on this side uh, it's your sound system here's your remote uh, tv over here again set up for your local channels shut that off jbl sound system not just for looks anymore. Blow that, your JBL sound system. Uh, take out Bluetooth, let's go to FM. I don't know what kind of channels I'll pick up inside this building here. But three zoned, indoors, outdoors, and then both. You have FM, USB, auxiliary, auxiliary 2, optical, HDMI, ARC, and Bluetooth. So a nice sound system. Fireplace. Not just for looks anymore. I can go through. You can make it brighter or dimmer. But the biggest thing now is the heat. If it's chilly in the morning or evening, if you're plugged into the campsite, don't use your gas. Crank the heat up on this thing. This has got uh, 1,400 watts, 4,700 BTUs of heat. It'll crank it out and get it toasty in here in no time. I'm going to show you real quickly how to turn your sofa into a bed. So you want to stand in the middle. You move your cushions or just self throw it on. Stand in the middle, give you good leverage to bring your legs out. Jack knife it out towards you. Lay your back down. And just say quickly, you've got sleeping quarters. Now the biggest thing in reversing the process and putting it back, you gotta make sure you lift this back up first, otherwise you will damage your sofa. Stand here, fold your legs in, jackknife it down, return our cushions. And just say quickly, we're back to a sofa. You also have some more of those light controls here. Living room lights you can shut off. Accents, pendant, kitchen ceiling, shut it all off from here. That sofa set the same way. These are 
power recliners. Oops, I hit the massage. Heat massage as well. USB ports and accent lights on both. Track, oops, I do it again. We track these back down. Accent lighting up here. And a big curtain. And down into the kitchen, you will have a couple of folding chairs. There's storage. There's a table extension. This will come out and extend. Coming up the hallway, coming into our bedroom, a third TV. I turn that on, get um, return vents here. Again, run your digital channel scans for your local channels. Charging station here. Under your bed will be a couple of folding chairs that match your dinette chairs. This is your whole vacuum system. A couple of attachments to go inside your microwave. Your spare water filter and a hose for siphoning water or inserting your antifreeze. And this will help change your uh, water filter. In your bed, you sit in your bed, do the same thing, shut everything off. Kitchen, all interior, all exterior lights as well. Another door to make sure that you have snapped open for travel. Both of these, they will slide through here. They're also prepped for a washer and dryer if you ever decide to put one in here. A couple of 110s with GFCI resets in there. There's your location for your dryer vent for the techs. In your bathroom, you want to make sure that this particular door, let me turn my lights on, the shower door, I want to make sure this one is snapped open for travel. It's nice glass, we don't want to ruin that. Underneath here, under your sinks, you got a little pex, a little plumbing to maintain, just keep an eye on it. You know, you are bouncing a house down the road, make sure nothing's wiggled loose over time. Same thing under this sink, just keep an eye on your plumbing. You also have a back stair vent back here. Turn that on, again, it will open itself and turn on. Four different speeds on that, or hit off, it will close and shut off. So that about covers everything on the inside. It's like we're leaving the campsite and close the unit up. So first I like to say doors and drawers. Walk through the unit, make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's going to impede our slides from coming in. We put everything away. And then start in the back and shut lights off. Make sure our vents are closed. So you see on doors and drawers, you don't want anything to impede these slides from coming in. Same thing up in the living room. We'll bring our TV back down for travel. Never leave that up for traveling. The televator, as they call it, could be damaged. We'll put all of our remotes away. Now I like to come to my control panel and hit number one and see what accent lights are still on. Now I'll go through and shut all them off. All right, now that we've got every light off in the unit except for what can be controlled from number one, turn that back on. I'm going to start closing slides from down here to show you how this down here works. We're going to go up to slide number one and hit retract. Make sure you hold your button in. Again, we went through up there and make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Just 
skip to slide number two, hit retract. Make sure your finger's right on these. See how important it is to have those doors closed over there on your pantry, underneath your TV area. This slide will rip them doors right off. So even though those clamp close nicely, I am going to recommend that when you arrive, you can take a look at those and make sure that those haven't popped open. All right, we'll slowly close the other three by going up here to our control panel, going to motors, come on down to slide number three, and hit retract. Got to keep your finger on the button here. Keep it lit. There it goes. Number four is going to be your dinette. When do you hear that noise on the slide because it's closest to me? Well, I run five in. All that is is the slide mechanism telling itself that it's already in, it doesn't need to come in any further. Nothing grinding, don't think that if you hold the button in too long that you're grinding your slide, that is not the case. Again, running that last slide in up in the upper living room. Touch number one, shut off all of our lights. Now, the biggest thing on these steps, all right, now exiting the unit. Biggest thing you want to remember on these steps, opening or closing, is to make sure you have this door right back in that magnet. That way you have enough room for this to open and get up in there. Set it inside. Once that's in there, we push down this button and we're gonna bring this over. Set that right like that. I'll lock that in there for you. Now, before you leave the dump station, I say that in case you want to go inside and check the levels while you're dumping. Make sure you lock and deadbolt your exterior door, lift, and turn this handle. Make sure that's set up like that for travel. Otherwise, if we are out boondocking, we would dump our freshwater tank. Anywhere else, hook up our, unhook our power, our water, and our cable. Bring up our stabilizing jacks by coming right here and simply turning this back on by touching both at the same time. Now turn that back on here. And then you're just gonna hit retract all. And I'll show you those coming up. Gonna lower your front here for a minute. see them up we'll go ahead and raise your front bring it back up get your vehicle up underneath put it back down hook up your vehicle and head on up to the dump station now at the dump station park accordingly your dump is going to be behind your tires on your off camp side or your driver's side of your tow vehicle this black and gray here is going to be your middle bathroom, your main bath, and your sinks and, sh and uh, stuff in your kitchen here. First thing you can do is pull this black handle. Start by hooking up up here. 
First one in the front, we'll pull that black handle. That's gonna be your front bathroom here. Once it sounds like that's no longer draining, check inside, make sure black tank number one's empty. If it is, come on back up to our control panel here. Grab the hose from the dump station. Emphasizing to leave that handle open. Hook up your hose here and let that run for a good five minutes. That's gonna flush out your black tank, get all that nastiness out of there. When that's done, remove that hose. Give that just a good five minutes to wash out. Move that hose. Come back here, make sure all that that drain out that you put in there, all that washout has drained. Then close your black handle and pull your gray handle. That's gonna be cleaner waters out of your kitchen sinks. Then it'll clean your sewage hose out for you. When that's done, close that handle. Come on back here and hook up to this dump. This is gonna be your middle gray dump. That's gonna be for your outdoor kitchen. When that one's done, come back here to your last black and gray. This is going to be your main bathroom, back off your uh, bedroom. Again, pulling our black handle on one on the left first. Go inside, make sure it is empty. Once that one's empty, leave that black handle open and use this black tank flush. This will be for your main bathroom. When that's done, again, make sure all the washout that you put in there has drained. Then close that black handle and pull your gray handle. It's going to be cleaner water, sinks and showers again. That'll clean your sewage hose out for you. And you can conveniently and sanitarily store it right inside your storage area right there for your sewage pump. The last thing we do is we're going to go around and dump some low point drains. Got one right here underneath your kitchen. Get up underneath there and open that one up. Over on our other side, we got a couple spots. Again, the one inside the storage where the access panel is at this low point drain. Open that one up. Got another one right here. That's gonna be a freshwater drain, that white handle. Once them are all drained out, you know, return back up front to our hot water heater. Try to walk you so far around this thing. But if we're at the end of the season, we're ready to close the unit up. Come to your hot water heater. Don't just pull the drain plug. Come up in here. Lift up on this pressure release valve first. That's going to dump hot water out of there, so be careful. When that's all dumped, put your handle back down. Then you can pull that drain plug. Hook up and head on home. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this door point for many years to come. Happy camping.